Welcome everybody. This is Winging It with Alejandro. I'm your host, Alejandro. Oh, please, please, please. I don't need an applause. You all are far too kind. And the goal for Winging It is that this is a birding series where you'll be able to discover birds by sight and sound all throughout New York City, but more specifically during this quarantine, either through your window. Come join the journey with me. Welcome to episode one. Now this bird that we're about to discover together, you can find all throughout New York City. And no, not the pigeon, which is called the house sparrow. Sis, do you know what the house sparrow is? And I asked my sister because that's the camera person behind these doors. All right, so the house sparrow, a little brown bird that a lot of people think is a baby pigeon. But guess what? It's not a baby pigeon. I've Googled what a baby pigeon looks like. How many of you know what a house sparrow looks like? Go ahead, raise your hand. Not just kidding. This ain't Dora the Explorer. I can't tell if you're actually raising your hand or not. All right, um, so... And there's actually one right there in the tree. When you think of the house sparrow all throughout New York City, what colors do you think of it? Brown. Brown. So yes, they are brown, but the males have a black bib. So male house sparrows have a black bib and kind of like a black mask. And they have like a gray crest on his head. Um, let me just see what else. It's like a nice uh, gray crest on the head. And it's like a nice buffy brown on its back. The female is quite similar actually as well. Um, the only difference is it doesn't have the black bib and it has like a weird uh, tan or not weird I like it like a tan stripe across his eyebrow like a tan eyebrow now juveniles also look like females except that those juveniles do not have that tan stripe and by juvenile I'm gonna explain what I mean by that because I have been asked this a juvenile house sparrow does not mean it's a bad bird all right <laughs> it just means that it hasn't gone through its puberty phase yet so that hasn't developed the black bib yet all right so that's what I mean by a juvenile house sparrow when is a house sparrow considered not a juvenile? Like at what age? Is there a specific age frame, age time frame? You know, just like humans, I cannot give you the exact time when you're going to go through puberty. <laughs> um, so I don't know when they will gain that black bib. Partially because I don't know, but you'll know they're fully adult on the male if you see the black bib on this face. Okay. Good question though. Uh, can I ask you what to guess what you think they eat? Mm, berries. They will also um, go on top of parked cars and eat any smashed insects that they can. Alright, so they also eat insects, but mostly um, the diet mostly consists of seeds. But the other cool thing about house sparrows in the city is that they'll eat whatever they can find. I've seen like a group of four or five house sparrows fighting over the small piece of bagel. You know, and I think that's what makes them so successful here in the city because of us, of humans. You know, they eat whatever we end up throwing in the trash or on the ground. You hear, you hear the house sparrows uh, singing and chirping around. What do they sound like? That sounded exactly like chirping. That was a trick oh, question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if you wanted me so to the, make a, a bird noise. So, so house sparrows have a chirping noise, and they and um, they also have like a little weird, like a heat sound. Um, I'm not gonna. Could you do... give an example? <laughs> <laughs> I will not be given an example. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, I'll do uh, examples of other birds, but I mean, it's just a basic chirp. I was actually singing down there, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna record it while it's singing and I can tell on this camera right now that I have a male on my screen an adult male question for the audience how do you know that I have an adult male on my screen I can't tell if you're putting your hand up but yes you're correct because it has a black bib and a black mask good job sis now yes. You have been chosen to speak for the audience, so are there any other questions that you think the audience might want to know about the house bear? I would want to know is how did they how did they get here? How did they get to New York City and become like? Because I feel like I see them all year round. So is there a reason? Great question. They are they are here all year round because they're able to adapt to their environment. You know, they see what we have here. What we have here. Two of them. Air conditioners. I thought you would have gotten that one right. <laughs> So they'll, you know, some some birds even have, have adapted to building a nest right under right under a, a, an air conditioner. And then over here we have flying in on uh, either I think a female adult female uh, house sparrow that just flew in. Um, but you know how they got to New York City. So they're actually not native to the city, even though you see them everywhere. Um, they actually come from Eurasia and North Africa. Um, and then over 200 years ago, uh, we released them uh, in New York in 1851. And there are many reasons as to why. Some speculate is because we wanted to bring the birds, um, to run, wanted to release birds that mimic the ones that you would read in Shakespeare plays. Others um, 
Others believed uh, that they would help kill off the insects, eat all the insects. You know, and a lot of people just uh, don't have such an appreciation for these birds, but I kind of like to think of these birds as, you know, it's crazy to me how they're so small, but able to uh, have adapted to New York City and all its winter's conditions, you know? Um, so this bird is just chirping along. Oh, oh, this bird just grilled me. Hold on. Cool, so I had to take a picture because the bird just grilled me and I will show you guys how that bird just grilled me. But yeah, they are such small brown birds, but they're able to survive through our New York City winters. Um, you know, we have our big puffy coats. They also get puffy during the winter um, as a jacket, but still there's such little brown things that survive in the winter. So questions then for the audience. How can you tell the difference between a juvenile house sparrow and a female house sparrow? You don't have to answer now because I'm not going to hear you. Thank you for spending time with me, Alejandro Vinuesa, and my sister, the camera person, Priscilla Vinuesa. And this has been Winging It with Alejandro. I'll see you next time. I'll see you next time on next week's episode. Huh? I can't tell you that yet. It's a surprise. And that's a wrap, people. Cue the outro music. This episode was brought to you by Christadora. Nature, Learning, Leadership, where we help New York City students connect with the nature. For more information on who we are, visit our website, chrisador.org. To join the social media fund, don't forget the hashtags, Winging It with Alejandro, Nature From My Window, Chris Adora.